These are threads I just cut fresh on this uh, Harbor Freight lathe. I'll show you how to do it on this sample piece of wood right here. First thing I'll do is take off the back here. Uh, this exposes all the gears. Um, and it also has a threading chart right here. So it gives you the uh, threads per inch that you can do. Looks like it goes all the way from 12 to 52 um, in increments um, that vary. Um, and then got the gears here. We have the replacement gears um, with different um, different amounts of teeth that vary the ratio between the rotations of the spindle and the rotations of the lead screw down here. Right now it's set up to do 12 threads per inch, which is the coarsest it can do. Here's um, all the gears um, that go together to make all these different combinations. You can see that some use three gears, some use four gears. Um, you know the difference uh, because there'll be a slash here in the C column if um, it's the straight configuration. If it does have a number for C, um, then you'll have this other configuration. This up here is your gear A. This is gear B. This is gear C, which right now is not being used um, because we're in 12 threads per inch, it's got the slash. And this is gear D. Um, so A, B, D is the configuration we're in right now. Um, we've got a 40, a 65, and a 30. Of course, it doesn't matter what C is right now because it's not engaged with um, the D gear down here. If we did have a C gear um, engaged, then we would want these, the spacer and the gear here, to be flipped. So the D engages with the C and not with the B. There's also some um, bolts here um, and in the back here that you can loosen to uh, bring this shaft um, in and out and up and down. Uh, it moves the whole banjo around. Um, so that you can get the full engagement, uh, the tooth engagement on all the gears. Up here, um, this is how you can change the direction of the, um, of the lead screw. If you pull this handle back, then this whole thing moves and you can put it into a different position um, that uh, adds or takes away a gear in the system so that um, it'll reverse the direction. And with the half knot engaged over here, um, you can turn the spindle, see all the gears moving over here, down to the lead screw, and the lead screw is driving our uh, whole carriage. Oh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the cover back on, um, cover up all the gears that could get stuff caught in them, and safer just to cover them up. I like to use um, just a standard bolt here, um, as big as I can get to use instead of a fishtail gauge. I don't have a fishtail gauge, so what I do is I line up the bolt so that it's sitting right on what I'm trying to thread. And then I can see how my tool is aligned. Uh, it looks like, in this case, my tool is right where it should be. Um, this would tell me if the tool is rotated in either direction. Um, but it looks like the, um, the 60 degree point of the tool is uh, laying just where it needs to be. Technically, before threading, we should turn the compound rest um, so that it's about a 60 degree angle and feed in this direction. Um, but since we're cutting wood, I don't think it's a big deal. I'm okay with just feeding straight in um, on soft material like this. But if you're, if you're cutting a thread that would have to be more precise and in a harder material, you wanna put it um, so that it's um, um, from straight, it should be 29 and a half degrees in this direction. Um, but I'm going to leave it like this for now. And we can go ahead and start threading. I'm going to put a relief um, in the back right here so that whenever I thread, I can come all the way up until my relief. If we turn on the lathe um, without the half nut engaged, you'll notice that the thread dial will spin. Uh, I'll bring it out here, and if I engage it somewhere, you see the thread dial stops and the carriage moves instead. Uh, so that's how we're going to use it to get perfect timing. Um, I'll bring it out here. I'll just touch on my part so we can get a scratch pass. Um, I'll slow it down a little bit because we need to hit the timing exactly right on this. 
I'm going to try to hit the one, engage the half nut lever at the one um, every time. I think that there are symmetries within the dial and I might be able to pick up the same thread using um, several of different positions, uh, but I'm not exactly sure how the dial works. I'd have to do some more experimentation, but if you want to guarantee that you always hit the same threading line, you can always go on the same number. So I always just hit the one and I know that I'm going to pick up the same thread. Now it can be pretty tricky because it looks like right here we may have hit the one, but we're actually um, a sixteenth of rotation off. And then same thing over here, we're pretty close to the one, but not on there. You gotta be um, right there if you wanna pick up that same thread. So in this case, we can actually engage the half nut lever before we have touched our, or before we engage the spindle. Sometimes you can't, depending on what the workpiece looks like. Since we just have open air on the side, I have the half nut lever engaged already. Um, and as I turn it on, you can see um, it's going to be traveling. Um, so I'm just going to let it go all the way until we hit the relief and then cut the machine off. And there are the beginnings of our threads. After I take a scratch pass, I always like to check with my thread gauge, make sure it's good. You can see it is 12 threads per inch, um, just like we set the gears to in the back. So that means it's cutting correctly. We can go ahead and proceed to depth. Uh, 12 threads per inch is a little bit um, unreasonable for something of this size. This isn't a standard thread or anything, um, just a demonstration. But I'll go ahead and take a few more passes. Um, you'll see the thread starting to form. On some lathes, you might have to pull the half nut lever up and then uh, move your Z axis back to the starting point. Uh, but in this case, because we can go into reverse, I just I'm gonna retract my um, retract on my X, switch it into reverse, keep the lever engaged, turn on my spindle, and we'll back up. We're still on the, uh, the same dial number here. We don't have to pull it up and down and risk being a little bit off of the, on the thread dial here. We can just go ahead in a little bit more, uh, farther depth of cut, and take another pass. So typically you'd be feeding in this direction, but um, I'm just going to be feeding forward um, for simplicity. And I went ahead to my other depth, put it back into forward. Uh, this is still engaged, so we can turn it on. We stop in our relief and the threads are a little bit deeper. So we have to remember 20 is where we were before. I'm going to back it out, turn it into reverse. It's very important you put it in reverse. if not. You might slam it into your truck, bring it back, put it back into forward, go to 20. Um, and then I'm gonna go a little farther and take another cut. So it looks like the wood's chipping out a lot. Um, I'm used to cutting metal or plastic. Um, it would probably make a cleaner cut um, than the wood is in this case. Um, but it's still forming the threads in the same place every time. It's really important that it's um, always following the same line of thread. Um, and you would just go to the, um, go to whatever depth you need to go to um, until uh, you have your pitch diameter right so that whatever it's mating onto it will fit smoothly. And that's the basics of how to cut threads on a Harbor Freight lathe.